These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I went with the throng and led them in the procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Welcome to a time of devotion today. Um, I'm going to wrap up Methodist things this week. It's just starting to feel a little, little stale. Still love our tradition and may come back to it or may uh, study it in some other ways. But I think when it comes to just resting in the middle of the week, it ends up feeling a lot like business to me. So we're going to move on. Uh, next week, we're going to start looking at 1 Thessalonians. I think it's it's appropriate for the season. There's some interesting stuff in there, and uh, I, I never pass up a chance to read Paul. So, um, so we're going to start looking at 1 Thessalonians, probably chapter by chapter, but I'll, I'll try to put a schedule below. Um, along with that, if you've been getting our emails or devotions um, on Sundays, you will get an email that suggests daily scripture readings, that gives you a psalm for the week and even offers a prayer. Um, I find that having that, that cue might be a good chance for myself and for all of us to spend a little more time in devotion than perhaps we have been. So look out for that on Sundays or in your bulletin if you're here in person. Uh, but today I'm going to finish up Methodism by talking about uh, how we run things, uh, talk about holy conferencing. So would you pray with me? Lord, you have promised that where two or three are gathered, you are there. Help us when we gather in your name to feel your spirit among us, to move between us. And even as we are separated uh, uh, physically today, Lord, uh, speak in your Holy Spirit between all the, all the people watching this. Uh, may all our hearts be joined together through the blessed name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. It's in his name we pray. Amen. So I'm just going to read just, just a little passage from Matthew 18 here. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. You may know that the Methodist Church is composed of conferences. All churches, uh, in one way or another, have to have meetings to decide what they believe, what they're going to do, uh, what their theology is to plan for, for the year and years ahead. We all need to meet. I think what makes us unique is that we believe that we are composed of our meetings. The Methodist Church, from one perspective, is composed of a lot of churches like this one, some bigger, some smaller, across the globe. Um, but that isn't... That isn't where the church is. You've heard perhaps too much this past year that the church is not a building. What we believe when we talk about conferencing is that the church is not a building, and it is not even everyone in the church who believes in, in the whole worldwide church. We believe that the church is in our connection to one another. When we pray together, when we discuss one another, when we challenge one another, when we engage in spirited discussion, we believe that that's where the Holy Spirit is, between you and me. Not just in me and in you, and maybe it comes into contact, but actually in our interactions. This was important um, at the church's founding because the Methodists had no buildings. They didn't have any churches. They didn't have any budgets. The Methodists were... Um, small groups of believers meeting in their groups, they believe meeting in their, their class meetings, not, not churches, in class meetings. And then there were preachers who rode around England and eventually around the United States um, who preached day-to-day, uh, -day, sometimes on Sundays. And so what, what we came to understand was that the churches, when we gather together, 
it's not just about the people or the place, but about the people together. And so every year, uh, even in ancient times, not ancient, pre-industrial, whatever the word you want to use is, the preachers would get together and talk about what they were teaching, talk about things they needed to learn, talk about plans for instructing new teachers and preachers. And we do the same thing. The general conference meets once every four years, unless they call a special one, and they write that discipline. They adjust things. They talk about our rules. They discern, hopefully, together uh, what we'll do. The jurisdictional conference meets, in our case, at Junaluska, and appoints bishops and sets boundaries and does other things in our region. The annual conference, we meet once a year to ordain people, to set our rules, to make appointments. Um, we believe that that is our central organizing moment. And even our church, which, as far as you might know, just meets every week and we all see each other here, we have a charge conference, which, if you have been to one recently, can feel like voting, can feel like just approving things we already know. But charge conference is, is, has been the past few years, a, and, and historically, is a worship service. It's a service of worship together where we uh, invite the Holy Spirit to be among us, to set our course for the coming year. These things, these experiences, these conferences, and the holy fellowship we have before and after them, which is what conferences have always really been about, is the time before and after you do your voting, they are reminders that, that in Christ we have not just formed relationships, but have been bound together in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit unites us, even with people on the other side of the world, in the Philippines and Africa, closer than we can even uh, conceive of. We are all bound together in our relationships, in our experiences, in our interactions. Sometimes this is just meant we take a vote. We decide things by a vote. But in my opinion, the Holy Spirit doesn't work by the democratic process. <laughs> Not just to show a hands to reveal what the Holy Spirit believes. The Holy Spirit is revealed when we actually speak to one another. <laughs> what a novel idea, right? When we actually listen to what a brother or sister has to say, to when we meet each other as friends, even if we do not know each other terribly well. The Holy Spirit meets between us, not among us, not around us while we're all here, but between you and me when we talk. That is where the Holy Spirit enters. I'm afraid sometimes that our world has become too contentious for something like conferencing. And it's even been my experience that in any level, these things can get so bogged down, so confused, so concerned with um, procedure, maybe, that we miss the chance to meet with a brother or sister. But the good news is the Holy Spirit and Jesus himself has not only promised to show up when we convene the, the right meeting. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Wherever you gather, whether you gather uh, at the restaurant or after church or before church, in Sunday school or among your friends at another time, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What if the church can be the place where we really bind ourselves together, despite the arguments and the fights out there, or even in other parts of the church? 
What brings us together is, is not that we all sit here on Sunday, or we all used to, but as you all very well know, it's the conversations you have over a meal, before or after church, <laughs> during church sometimes. This is where the Spirit enters. This is where we find Jesus. It's my prayer that, uh, that our whole church can find uh, the beauty of this conferencing, not in advocating for a side, not in fighting for our position, but in listening and speaking to what we have heard in real conversation, real fellowship. It's funny how novel that seems, especially, especially when we've been deprived of so much fellowship. But the Holy Spirit's still at work between you and me today on our Google Meet and Sunday School and whatever phone calls and experiences you've had, even digitally. So the Lord's still among us, Holy Spirit's still with us, and, and with, with their guidance, I believe there, there can be great things, great experiences of the Holy Spirit here and across our whole church. And it's worth recalling that the Holy Spirit doesn't just connect if you've got a cross necklace and the other person does. But if you talk about Jesus, not in a pushy way, but just in a way, look, this, this is my Lord. This is my God. This is an important part of my life. The Holy Spirit will arrive, whether, whether everyone there knows it or not. Would you pray with me? <sighs> Holy Lord, we ask that you would uh, enlighten our conversations, illuminate our lives in your spirit, that we may see you gathered among us in all places at all times, and that we may even follow you when we see you. Lord, help us not to get bogged down so much in our own uh, opinions, feelings, our own leanings, our own biases, but guide us between each other, that we may serve you more fruitfully and more faithfully. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. I hope everyone has a, a blessed rest of the week. Take care.